It is incredibly easy to get enthusiastic about AI coding and start building your apps with AI, but what do you do when AI makes a mistake and edits a bunch of files? You might click approve without actually understanding what you're doing and regret the decision later when you find that half of your app is broken. In this video, I'm going to solve that problem for you by explaining how you can use Git a distributed version control system that's used by professional software developers to make sure that they keep track of the changes that they make to their project and ensure that they can roll back when a big mistake has been made. First, I want to show you why you actually need Git. And to do that, I have my sample application here that I use to keep track of my plans. And what I want to do is I want to add a pagination feature because all of these plans here are just listed on the site. And I want to really show just six at once because it's going to become overwhelming otherwise. So I can actually use AI to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and in Visual Studio Code, click on the Copilot icon, and then I'm going to go ahead and use the agent mode. And I'm going to ask it to add pagination for my plans overview page to make sure that it only shows six plans at once. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to illustrate that Copilot is going to change quite a lot of code. And it might work, but there might also be small little bugs that will only become apparent once you start building out your application further. And the problem is, by not using something like Git, you don't actually know that these changes were made at a specific point in time. I'm just going to approve these changes right now, and then the files are saved, which means that a week later down the line, I don't actually know what caused my application to break when I try to build more complex features. And trust me, AI is going to break your application every now and then. So you really need this ability to roll back your application to a healthy state. For example, right now it's editing the backend of the application and adding new parameters for me to allow the system to return a page name, et cetera, result. So instead of returning all the plans at once, it might only return six at once. But not only that, it also has to actually modify the front end. So you can see that right now it's starting to edit the React file, which is the front end of my application. So let's wait until it's done and then review just how much code it actually had to change. So it seems like Copilot is done with the AI generation and we can indeed see that it's changed both the back end as well as the front end. Now I'm gonna go to my browser first to just check if everything looks functional. And indeed, you can actually see that now I can only see six plants at once and it's saying here that it's showing six of 10 plants. And if we go to the next page, you can indeed see that those other four plants are there. So that actually looks great. Now, how do I actually approve these AI code changes? Well, in Visual Studio Code, I can just click on keep as well as keep again for the backend route. And then there you go. It's all done and saved. The problem with this is that I've just saved these files locally. And in a week's time, I won't know that AI made these code changes. So if something in my application is broken related to pagination, I can't roll back and investigate any of this. And this is where Git comes in because with Git, not only can you approve these AI code changes, you can actually make sure that these specific changes are attributed to AI so you can come back to them later and fix things up if necessary. So how do you get started with Git? Well, the first thing you need to do is install Git. And for that, in the description, there is a download page for whatever operating system you're on. Once you've installed Git, you can again go to one of your favorite code editors, in my case, Visual Studio Code, and open a terminal. So in my case, I'm just gonna press this little plus button to start a new terminal next to the one that's actually running my local project. And first thing you need to do is go to the root of your project. So in this case, you can see that I'm in this very specific folder, and that's because I opened a terminal session from this route file, but I actually need to go back by doing cd dot dot until I've hit the front of the application. So I'm going to go back all the way until I am in this folder. And the way that I know that this is the correct folder is because if I type ls, you can see here that all of these files are present. And that's kind of the same layout as you see here on the left, which is indeed the folder where my repository is present. So in here, I want to type git init. And now you can see that it says that it's initialized an empty Git repository. And immediately, you can actually see that a lot of these files start to become green. And this is because Visual Studio Code, together with pretty much any code editor nowadays, is native Git integration. So it recognizes when there is a Git folder and then immediately just keeps track of changes. So in this case, of course, everything is new because I've not created the Git repository before. Now, you might be noticing here that some files are actually not green, such as this node modules folder, as well as some 
files like this database file right here. And this is the first concept that's important to get started on right away, which is to actually create what's called a git ignore file, this dot git ignore file. Because with this file, you can actually determine specific folders and files which are not going to be included in your Git repository. And that's important because you are actually able to send all of this code over to a remote platform like GitHub. And if you do that, you of course want to make sure that a lot of secrets or database files are not included. So by creating this .gitignore file, you can simply put in a lot of file names or folder names that will not be included with Git. So for example, if I try to find that database file, you can see that with this star, I'm indicating that no database file should be committed at all. And that's why you see here that the plant care file is grayed out. Now what I can do is I can actually go to this here. This is the source control pane in Visual Studio Code. And I'm actually going to go ahead and add everything here because I want to make sure that I've got a, you know, first version of my application committed. And now I can just call this, you know, initial commit. So, so the idea behind a git commit is that you combine changes from multiple files into one meaningful commit, which has a clear message. So in this case, I'm just going to call it initial commit because I'm committing the entire project at once. So I can simply commit this and then I can actually go ahead and make a small change to my code base. Let's ask AI again. So I'm going to now say change the pagination to work starting from three items not six. And what you will see now is that again, the AI code editor is going to get started on the work. And we're going to have to approve it in the same way as we did before. But now we can actually create an explicit git commit for this change. And that is super important because it allows you to actually roll back the changes later on. So you can see now that the AI editor is starting to go and edit these files. You can actually see that it's editing our front end page because our front end page actually determines the pagination limit and it simply changed that number from six to three. If I now check my website again, you can actually see that we actually have more pages now. So we only have three plans per page and we can keep going until page four and then we've covered all 10 plans, which is exactly what we want. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep all of these changes. So I'm gonna click on keep twice and everything is saved. However, on the Git side of things, we've not committed these changes yet. So you can actually see here in the source control pane that we've got these two files listed again with those exact same changes. And these changes are pretty meaningful. I've changed the default pagination limit and changed the number to three on the front end as well. So what I can do is I can actually combine both these changes in one commit, and I'm going to call this pagination default change to three plants. And now I can commit this specific bit of work by pressing this button. Now, actually, what I'm doing here is I'm using a user interface to perform a lot of Git commands. You can do all of this in a terminal as well, but if you're just getting started with Git, it's very nice to be able to just use a user interface like Visual Studio Code. But to give you an idea of the fact that every command here can actually be run in a terminal, which is something that you'll learn as you get used to Git, I'm going to show you that this change was actually created. I'm going to go and type in git log. You can indeed see here that I've created this initial commit as well as the commit to change the pagination default. Now, the reason why it's so nice to combine these changes into a commit is because you can roll back specific changes later. So let's say that we get customer feedback and customers say, well, we actually preferred to have the default set to six plants. With three plants, we have to keep clicking through pages and you know we don't mind more information being on the page. Well, the nice thing is that you can actually revert specific changes. So for example, we can actually copy this commit ID. So I'm gonna highlight it and press Command C. And then I'm just going to type git revert and paste that commit ID. Now you can see that it's opening my Visual Studio Code window because I've set Visual Studio Code to the default text editor of this machine. And you can indeed see that it's actually creating a new commit now for reverting a previously created commit. And you can see that it staged these changes where it's actually reverting plant list to go back to a limit of six. And even in the route file, which is our backend, it's changed the default back from three into six. So you can see here how it's just 
reverting those changes. And I can again commit this. So even when you're reverting changes, you have to create a commit for that. So instead of just loosely saving files, you more explicitly commit a meaningful batch of work. And this means that you can come back and revert it later. If AI breaks your application, you can much more easily figure out when this happened and actually revert the breaking change. And indeed, being back in my browser, you can see here that I have two pages again. So I successfully reverted the change and I have a real audit log of everything that happened during my application development. Now I want to show you one of the most powerful use cases of Git next to being able to track changes. And that is to publish your projects online, for example, on a platform like GitHub. It's important to know that platforms like GitHub don't own Git, but they're just implementations of Git in an online space. This means that you can create repositories and push your code to those repositories and make sure that you have, again, an audit log of all the changes that were made in the past. So now I'm actually going to create a new repository for this project. So in GitHub, I'm going to click new, and then I'm going to call this something like plant app, and I'm just going to make it a private repository for now. And when you create a repository on GitHub, it actually gives you terminal instructions for how to push an existing repository to GitHub. So you can see here that I have to actually change the origin of the Git repository, which basically means that I'm adding a URL that will be pushed to when I use commands like git push, and it's going to push what's called the main branch. We'll get a little bit more into branches later, but for now, let's actually just go ahead and copy this command and see what happens when I run it. So I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go ahead and paste that terminal command, and then I'm going to run it. And you will see that now I've pushed to this GitHub repository into the main branch. And I can just go back to my browser and check that that's actually the case. So in my browser, I'm going to refresh. And you can now see that I've created this plant app repository and I've pushed all the changes. In fact, if I go to my commits here, you will be able to see again that we have that initial commit, the pagination default change, and the revert of that change. And you can even click into the commit and see what exactly happened. So for example, you can see here that again, you know, that limit was changed from three to six, just like in the back end. If you already mastered these concepts, then you'll be ahead of many Vite coders who frankly don't really know what they're doing and are going to get stuck with AI very quickly. If you want to learn more, check out the link in the description below to become a real AI engineer, and I'll see you there.